And the recording has started, so go ahead, Jesse, turning it over to you. Please introduce yourself and take it away. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. So uh, the introduction slide will be here shortly. So this is detecting bad things on Windows. I have to do the, uh, you know, the disclaimer piece, and that's this following presentation contains my thoughts, ideas, and opinions, and they do not represent those of my current past employers, right? Uh, a lot of opinions and ideas here. Uh, do not use these things that I'm going to present for evil because uh, there's some things you can do bad with it. So those are my asks for that. Uh, and here goes into kind of uh, me. So that's my Chihuahua Rocky. Um, I'm obviously a proud pet parent. Uh, he's about four and the love of my life. Everyone, uh, if you don't have a animal, um, then I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm also a, uh, my family's personal tech. So, uh, you know, I'm dealing with operational issues at the family level. Uh, one of the things I like to do for my family and relatives is I like to promote uh, security stuff. Uh, one of the things that, that I have to say here, just because it, it kind of hit our, our family, um, the grandparents actually got their email compromised and the attackers went ahead and sent out a bunch of emails to all of their relatives and fr family and friends and they were mostly like church going people so very you know trusting and the email that was sent out was basically saying hey i need a gift card can you send me an amazon gift card and well a lot of uh, the grandparents friends went ahead and did that and so uh, i had to deal with uh, a lot of uh, cleanup after that um, but now, now we have kind of this yearly email that goes out saying, hey, I will never ask for money, iTunes, Xbox, gift cards, Google Play, you name it. I'm not going to ask for that Amazon gift card again uh, or any other things. Uh, there might be like some strange things where there's like donations for kids and stuff. And uh, that uh, that's a different thing, right? And I tell them, just follow up. Just follow up with those. <laughs> just, just tell your family and friends, relatives, that you're not going to ask for money. So th there's my uh, public service announcement for that. Uh, I used to be an admin. I mean, I'm kind of still an admin, but I used to be a full-time admin a while back for Nintendo. Uh, and a lot of the stuff in this presentation or a lot of security stuff in general was not passed on to me. And I'm hoping to pass those kind of things on uh, to you all uh, in this in this thing. So uh, other things I have to say, you know, the education. So I have a master's. Uh, two associates, one in information security and digital forensics. Another one is just kind of a generic IT, IT one. Uh, so all my all my uh, degrees and stuff are in security and in IT. Uh, and then I had probably over 50 uh, industry certifications, including like the GPEN and like the GCFA, so the forensic analyst and basically the pen tester hacker one from SANS. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, there is my LinkedIn profile. Go ahead and, and go there and check that out. We could do a little off-roading. Why not? Uh, if if people are curious on uh, like how I got to where I got, I pretty much uh, notate everything. And most importantly, I have these sections that I call educational growth. And so I notate like everything I've done that year. Do I go and attend management courses? Do I go to uh, you know conferences? What do I do? Where do I speak? Uh, just like this, I speak at all these things. Uh, and so I did that for many, many years. Uh, and so you can just kind of see what all I've learned. And if you have questions, please ask me and I'd be happy to talk about those at a different time. Uh, go ahead and go onto LinkedIn and ask me and, and yeah, I'd be happy to talk about it. So that leads me into like, what am I been doing for the community, right? Well, uh, I've been building infrastructure for WRCCDC, you might think, well, what's that? Well, there's the icon. It's a Western Regional Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. And you're probably like, yeah, what is that? So uh, it's part of a national uh, cyber defense competition that typically university students participate in across the whole United States. And again, you're like, what is that? OK, so the competition is more like a, um, you could say, uh, the students are maintaining and administrating a mini business. 
So they have DNS, they have Exchange, they have a website, they have uh, databases, whatever. They're, they're administrating and protecting those things. And you have industry uh, red teamers that are going to attack. To kind of like uh, put that into perspective, we can go like uh, PR, CCDC, Twitter. So this is the Pacific Rim uh, CCDC um, Twitter page. So like if you go back here, up here is the Pacific Rim. So Washington State, Oregon, and Idaho. Uh, so here is a picture of one of the rooms in a college, uh, and I am right there. But uh, so this is what it would look like in the red team. So there's a red team lead in the front, and then each uh, each group here is like a red team cell. And they have like, this guy would be like an operator, another operator, and then maybe this is like the team lead of that table. Uh, and then you'd have like maybe over here is like a scribe or something, and they're like taking down notes. So Typically in this scenario, there's another room and they're full of blue teams. And so the blue team, again, there'd be like, this one's like an administrator of the Windows domain. And this person is dealing with the website and this person's dealing with other things. And so, um, yeah, it's a pretty cool um, learning uh, thing for students uh, across universities, across the United States. Uh, if you're not involved in that, I would say, uh, please do get involved. Uh, students are the only ones that can actually be the students in this uh, thing where they're protecting the cities uh, or many businesses. Uh, however, if you want to be on the red team, that's industry uh, wide. So obviously you can just be in the industry and be accepted in. So um, yeah, and so other things that I did there while I was at WRCCDC, which was I was building infrastructure. So I was building the mini, mini city, the mini business. Uh, I got introduced to and, and got to play around with Ansible, so that was a lot of fun. I actually deployed a uh, what they call a WASA server. I guess you'd call it a SIM or a log aggregator or whatever. Uh, it was pretty cool. I was able to just go ahead and just run this Ansible script that just deployed its agents on all these Linux boxes, all these Windows boxes, and it was just it was auto magic. It was so good. Uh, and so yeah, so I get a lot of practice on uh, stuff when I when I deal with uh, WRCCDC or, or otherwise. Uh, so yeah, that's what I've been up to. So let's uh, let's go into defining some bad things, right? There's so many bad things, uh, and definitely bad things uh, outside of Windows that lead to getting into the Windows environment. So one of the things is uh, criminals looking for money. So they're they're looking to monetize something via ransomware. Or for instance, this is an example where there's a phone app. Uh, it's for uh, 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 Virgin Mobile, it looks like. So it's 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 a basically a website. This isn't even on like Google Play, and it's not like on iTunes. It's like a website trying to make you download this bad VPN or what have you. Uh, so obviously they can do bad things on your uh, machine. Uh, yeah, again, I gotta point out to the right is my Chihuahua very concerned about these bad things. Um, he's not liking uh, these nation states looking also to monetize things. Uh, and what I mean by nation states could be uh, as the FBI defines them. So if you go to the FBI's site and they'll have a wanted by the FBI and they'll actually call out specific people uh, and, and, and draw attribution to them as, as uh, whatever the nation state is. So you go to those sites and kind of see those things. So, you know, nation states, uh, you know, nation, whatever. So every nation has uh, cybersecurity hackers. I mean, the United States of America has nation states. We're a nation. Uh, we have the NSA hackers. So, I mean, um, yeah, so every every nation. So this list can be super big and super long. Uh, and lastly, about uh, bad things, uh, I had to call out, you know, the scammers, the gift card people like my grandparents, how they got um, their email compromised and an email sent out to all their friends talking about, hey, send us over a Amazon gift card, blah, blah, blah. Uh, again, this is here to say, hey, Warn, warn everybody, do not do not fall for these. Be very skeptical of these things. Uh, and in general, you know, who else are these these targets of these bad things? Well, you know, for um, universities, it could be your net ID, right? That gives you access to services and privileges to systems and accounts and information. They may want to monetize in some way, some form. Uh, so I'll, here's just you know financial to extort money from you, uh, using passwords to get into say OneDrive or something like that. 
Uh, there's just a, a whole range of things uh, that can be here. So let's be more specific though. Let's go into like a ransomware example. So this one is ransomware. Um, well, actually I should point out this thing right here to the right is a basically my my iPhone picture of a, a, a news, I forget what news, uh, media did this, but basically they're like, yeah, SolarWinds had a problem, Microsoft Exchange had a problem, uh, meatpacking had a problem, the, the gas line, all these places, right? So ransomware is just, it's in the news and everyone's saying, ha, you know, money is involved and you're locking up disrupting systems. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's that's great. Uh, and, and, and typically that's, that's basically what I see around everywhere is everyone's concerned of, they're locking up the system and they're wanting money. Uh, but I really, really am hoping that we're, we kind of move past like, oh, there's something on my screen and they want money. I want us to try to think about more of like all the steps while they were in, like either like before <laughs> all the things they did and how they got to certain places uh, or afterwards even, right? It's like follow up and like did did they persist to, in these, all these other areas that, um, while they were in. So um, I'm hoping that this will, will shed a light on some things. Uh, one other resource I'd like to provide is this YouTube channel. This YouTube channel is pretty sweet. It's these uh, North Shore School District, which is right up the road from myself uh, here at um, Washington State in Bothell. And these sysadmins were at a conference and they went ahead and stated kind of what happened to them with some ransomware. It was pretty sweet. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of this happening with folks and it's it's really refreshing to, to hear about it. So to put that into detail, uh, they actually talked about how like, for instance, on this right hand side, this uh, image here, group one got in like in March, 2019, they probably you know grabbed passwords and usernames and stuff and then they sold it, maybe they sold it. Uh, somehow group two got a hold of these things uh, and then they installed TrickBot, which then again, you know, got its certain things uh, that it wanted out of the environment. And then somehow group three was like, all right, time to monetize this by September. Uh, let's go ahead and just just put uh, Raikou, which is a ransomware and get money. Right. So this uh, let's hear YouTube. Let's go off roading again. So if we go to the YouTube systems up. Um, so it's pretty cool. They talked about the aftermath of what they had to deal with, how they had, you know, had critical relationships beforehand that helped them, you know, get things going really fast. They talked about having, um, not having air gap backups, which was really bad for rebuilding things. Uh, they talked about going through insurance uh, and what the insurance people filled. Uh, they talked about uh, just so many things. They had like, I think up to like 23 like lessons, like crazy lessons. Um, so I highly, highly recommend admins go to this uh, YouTube video and just just watch these two folks uh, talk about how a ransomware really impacted their uh, school district. I think they were they K-12. I think so. One of their saving graces is they were just so, um, they had not only Windows, but they had Macs and that kind of stuff. And so it was nice to have a mixture of stuff. So not, you know, most things, like students, I believe were on things that they couldn't uh, ransom. So yeah, so this is that's fantastic. I highly recommend checking that out. Um, so let's let's kind of talk about since I was like I'm very concerned about steps. Let's talk about how those steps go through a network. So uh, one of those steps could be initial access can get you in. So like what's that, right? Um, some people, I'm talking to admins here, um, so that, that would be RDP brute force, right? You could just kind of continually, like for instance, uh, like uh, at, at CCDC, what I would do when I was on the red team, uh, and not in WRCCDC, but PRCCDC, what I would do as a red teamer, one of the first things I would do is I'd go and brute force with RDP uh, using a special program like Medusa or Hydra or something like that, just a it's a hacking program. But anyways, it allows me to, to use the administrator account and then just whatever I want for, for passwords and just keep going. And what's probably not so cool about Microsoft is the built-in RID 500 administrator account. Uh, you can just brute force it all day long and it's just not, it's not gonna be like, oh, too many, too many, you know, tries, I'm gonna lock you out. Unless, unless you have a 
third party program that does that for you. Microsoft doesn't do it for you. Uh, so yeah, so tip, if you have a built-in RID 500 administrator account uh, and it's open to the internet or it's in a place that uh, it can be brute forced, I would look into the logs and see if it's being brute forced uh, and then investigate. Uh, so yeah, initial access, uh, brute forcing, um, like I mentioned, internet. So there could be like a vulnerable internet thing. Uh, a good a good thing about this, or not good thing. So like if you go show it in, we're going off-roading again, sorry. Uh, log in. So if we go to show it in and we just say, you know, whatever, SMB, I'm just going to put in here. So anyways, I can look in here and I can go, oh, SMB version one. I know just from the hacker, I know that I can just go uh, eternal, eternal blue metasploit. So I can go to internal blue and I can go, it, it's basically just a few commands really. It's like these, uh, basically this one right here. Well, I think it's this one. Actually depends on, there's some nuances and it's it's actually, uh, it's for a hacker, you have to like, oh, I gotta do this one, I gotta do this one, I gotta do this one. It's kind of, you gotta be very persistent. But anyways, the end result is you use one of these commands and basically by the end, you're running it and you've if you've got system on the box, no username, no password needed, you just needed that SMB version one uh, that you found <laughs> on Shodan, which scans everybody. So um, beware for those who have SMB version one, uh, hopefully you're not on the internet. Um, but yeah, so that's another initial access. So uh, another one is weak application. So again, Shodan can show like weak, I, I, you can consider this a weak application setting. It is a weak uh, setting for sure. Um, so that's, that's how you get in. Uh, and then once you're in, it's like, what do we do once we're in? Well, typically uh, we, we try to get, we try to look around really, trying to look around what's what's here. Uh, but but in here, I'm, not, I'm talking about getting more credentials, getting more privileges, seeing how far you can get with that and more access. So uh, credentials, plain text, uh, you can use various things to get that. Uh, you can look in history, maybe you typed it in something you shouldn't have. Uh, you can look in Word documents, Excel documents. Uh, maybe you can use Mimikads, uh, all sorts of stuff uh, to get it. Um, or you can use other services, uh, such as things that run a system on your on your computer or uh, other things like that to, to just get that uh, more access. And then what do you do with that? Well, lateral move. What does that mean? Well, let's just go back to RDP. You can consider it as like just RDPing to somewhere. Can I get here? Can I get there? Can I move there, right? There's various ways to do those things. Maybe it's just opening up a browser and just going somewhere and logging in with those newly found creds that you found or abused um, and getting there. So here, the example I put is PS exec. Some uh, administrators may know this. Uh, one thing I will point out with this is it leaves uh, tokens behind. Uh, so like, Basically, that means someone that follows behind on you can go ahead and grab that and impersonate uh, the administrator. And or if you're using this on the command line and you're not protecting where you're actually, you know, right, you know, uh, PS executing from and you're putting in the password in, on the command line, uh, watch out for that too. That could either be uh, found in memory or it could be found in logs, depending on how much you're logging the command line and stuff. Uh, so yeah, anyways, uh, lateral movement. Um, this is abuse of management tools. Um, I would say that could be, again, management tools is like RDP is a management tool, right? There's just uh, various things you can use as, as that. Uh, and then, or you could just do what some people do and that's just drop a C2, just drop, drop a command and control, cobalt strike. Um, here, real quick, uh, C2 matrix. C2 matrix, uh, yeah, that looks good. So if you go to the C2 matrix, uh, it's just looking um, fantastic. So basically in the C2 matrix, ah. Okay, so let's move. Why isn't it, it's cutting it off over here. Okay, so anyways, here's all these C2s. Like I could just choose which one do I wanna use? And it could be based off various things. Like do I need it because it needs to be running Oh, they don't have it. Basically, Ruby or PowerShell or you know, what is my you know C sharp? What do I need to like go as Merlin? All sorts of stuff. What do I need to do? Anyways, uh, there's tons of C2s out there that they could just drop and just kind of 
and they have built-in things to go laterally. Uh, okay, so once you're on, you also kind of want to have persistence, right? You could, one of the things you could do is if you have access to GPOs, you can change those GPOs to get, you know, enable the guest account, uh, to add uh, users to certain computer systems, uh, add, add your accounts to various other things, or, uh, write all uh, DACLs or, you know, just a whole whole bunch of stuff. Administrators will know uh, you can just make GPOs do just about anything. Uh, and with that, you could make a GPO do a scheduled task, right? Hey, run this scheduled task, run this thing that PowerShell's out or bits out or whatever you want out, cert util or whatever your choice is, out to the internet to pull down a maybe a C2 or maybe it's to drop your firewall, or maybe you know various things to basically allow you to persist. Maybe it's to add another account, um, those kinds of things, uh, local account. So payload. So this is we were talking about kind of the steps. These are all the steps going through. You know, get access, get credentials, move, see where you can go, and then kind of stick around for a bit. And then you know, last but not least, you can either do the, you can do the maze ransomware. You can do this ransomware. You can do the, that's the WannaCry ransomware. Uh, and so again, everyone's focusing on this last half, right? And I don't see a lot of focus on all this other stuff. It's like, okay, so how much of this other stuff is happening on all these other systems that are not the system that has this background, right? So that's that's the key takeaway from that. Um, Another, and I kind of actually went through this before, so I could speed through this one. But basically, I was like, you know, you can go and check out systems on the public internet. Again, you just go off roading over here to show it in, do the thing on the public internet. It's kind of like going up to a drive through and saying, what do I want to do? Let me see. Um, and then initial access. This could be, oh, I don't think I brought this up. This could be like, you could also have just like bad passwords, like your reuse is terrible. Like, for instance, right here, um, Domino's in 2014, uh, they got they got their their username and passwords compromised. So uh, attackers could go here to this Have I Been Pwned site. Uh, let's go off roading again. Here that is. They can just go passwords, download all these passwords right here, uh, 12 gigs of it, and then um, crack them, and then basically do that RDP thing and crack forever against your you know. Um, say like say you haven't changed your Domino since 2014. They can take that password and try to use it on your work account, your bank account, uh, social media, you name it, whatever it is. Uh, they want to get money out of you. They'll just reuse your password. So uh, it's just as easy as that. And then um, once they get in, another just as easy, and I kind of mentioned it before, is they can just as easily open up a web browser, go to like OneDrive or Google Drive, and just Look for files and download, uh, and good or not good, um, to take this stuff out. Google has actually made Google Takeout, so you could actually do a Google Takeout and take out like your whole, uh, a whole bunch of stuff, all your email, all your Drive stuff, just a bunch of stuff. Uh, but the good thing about this is it actually sends an email. So if your email, well, problem is, is if your email is compromised and they're putting forwards on it that you'll never see that email, then you won't see it. So that's another thing to look out for on your emails uh, for home use and at, at work is forwards. Is the spammer in your system sending out doing bad things and forwarding anything that comes in somewhere else? Uh, and they can change that, right? They can be like, ah, the subject is this, or it's coming from here, or they can do all sorts of stuff and then make sure it forwards to them uh, and that you don't see it, that they're doing bad things. Um, I'm saying all these bad things. I hope, I hope everyone here is doing some kind of, or has some kind of incident response. Here's an example of UW and what they have. Uh, right here are two things I'll highlight. We've got a first response checklist and a first response guide. So if you're curious of like how to like handle an incident, uh, please do go over here to the CISOs area. Uh, under under reporting and you can go ahead and check it out yourselves uh, if you don't already have that or maybe look at it and get some additional uh, stuff. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention we have a privacy report uh, and it'll show more things like uh, that have to do with GDPR and PII and PHI and that kind of stuff and the way to report that stuff. 
So uh, please, hopefully, if bad things do happen on your systems, uh, you have a way to report it and you have some kind of incident response mechanism in place. So let's go into some of the bad things um, that I've done uh, <laughs> in CCDC and elsewhere. So this logo to the right is Atomic Red Team. Uh, it's a repo. Uh, it's a GitHub repo. Uh, and I've submitted these like one, two, three, four, five, I don't know, a bunch of stuff. Basically, Red Team Tactics. Uh, my whole thing was originally when I was on uh, PRCCDC as a, a Red Team lead, I was noticing when I got operators, they didn't quite know how to do some things. So um, I wanted to make it easier for them. So I I'd be like, hey, we'll go here. Go here if you want to figure out how to enable the guest account, because that's what I want you to do. Or here's how you crack the, the password using Hashcat, because I need you to do that. Or, you know, whatever it is. So I, I went ahead and I developed these things. I submitted to the, the uh, and actually here, this is what it looks like right here on GitHub. Um, and so I submitted it to them and they went ahead and they, um, these are the ones that actually got committed. So these are, um, these are the red team bad things that I've done and developed uh, and shared with the world. Uh, so there's a bunch of, you're probably wondering, what are all these T number things? So this is nomenclature that the MITRE framework has created. So I should probably talk about that and go into that. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So that's this right here. Um, so what a, what a MITRE attack is, is adversary tactics, techniques, and common knowledge. So these things right here are tactics, reconnaissance, or initial access, or persistent. That's just a tact, that's a tactic. Uh, a technique of that would be like the, right under reconnaissance, there's 10 ways to do it. There's 10 techniques. You can do active scanning, you can do all sorts of things with that. Um, initial access, another one is like getting, you know, default accounts, like over here I've highlighted guest, you can get a guest account, um, and they and they assign a number, and here's the number for for like default accounts, it's a T1078, whatever. And so uh, this is what uh, Atomic Red Team has used for nomenclature. So whenever you want to do an attack, uh, they reference back to here and say, okay, the attack is basically something in the default account. Um, and so you just you do the thing. Uh, it'll be more clear as I go on. So really what, what attack is really just an encyclopedia. Remember back way back in the day when we used to have encyclopedias? That's all it is. It's just an encyclopedia full of just uh, bad things. A bunch of techniques, a bunch of low hanging fruit. This is how you do something. Uh, and so at a minimum, I, I say uh, cybersecurity and administrators should know these minimum low hanging fruit tactics, techniques really, uh, that can be done on your system. Uh, this, there's a lot here, but um, uh, things like Atomic Red Team make it easier and, and other things make it easier too, but I'm just gonna be focusing on Atomic Red Team. So I wanted to show you the demo. The demo used to be embedded in here, but when I would give it out to places, uh, it would um, it would be too big. Uh, and so I just ended up having to uh, just do this. So let me just um, grab this video here and we can go hopefully to it. Yeah, okay. Demo. I'll make it bigger. All right, so what I'm doing here is I, I, I'm on a client one, top left here. It's a Windows device, Windows 10. I've got event viewer open and I'm just looking through the logs. Really, I'm, I'm showing that I've right here, like I've cleared PowerShell, I cleared the security log. I'm basically what I'm doing is clearing all the logs. So when I do my bad things with Atomic Red Team, then you can see them in these logs. So to back it up a little bit, uh, Atomic Red Team is really a great like red team adversarial automation tool. So it automates doing bad things. Like you don't have to like worry about like learning, staying late, up late at night, trying to figure out how to do these bad things. Atomic Red Team just automatically does it for you using those numbers, that nomenclature. So cool. All right, so again, uh, back to this event viewer. Again, I'm just kind of showing everybody that there's, I'm clearing all the logs. Okay, so I did something previously. Let me clear all this. I was just making sure that this works. So let me clear it. So I'm clearing it. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, if not, you can go here later and make it bigger. 
Uh, so basically, this is the automation command. I wonder, can I make it bigger? Yes, awesome. Okay, so basically, this is the automation. Then the nomenclature. What am I going to do? And then I, I'm I'm win RMing to the box because I'm at I'm on a different box right now. And then I say, hey, show me show me the brief details. So there's like one, two. There's three things I can do for this 1070 thing. Oh, it looks like I'm trying to do it. Go somewhere else. Oh, so if this thing isn't here, it'll give me a red thing. So I'm like, oh, okay, maybe it's one. So I do one, and I'm like, oh, okay, here it is. So on this one, it has only two things. So one's enable guest account with RDP capability and admin privileges. So this is the one I developed and built. So we're going to go with that one. So uh, in this, I'm doing test number one. And again, I'm showing briefs so that I can be like, okay, is this the one? Okay, yeah, yeah, this is enable guest account. Cool, cool. I want to do that because you don't want to run something and be like, oh, I didn't mean to run that. So I always like to do this whole show details brief. Okay, so you can also prompt for input args. So you can say, hey, uh, it defaults to guest, but I, I changed the guest account. I changed it to Bob. And so you can change it there by the input thing. So the next thing I put here uh, is check prereqs. So you can actually, this is a guest account is kind of built into Windows. So there's no, there's no need for checking prereqs on this really. Um, but but I'm just doing it for here. So what this does is like say if you're using Mimi Cats, it checks if you have Mimi Cats on the system. If it doesn't, then you can run another command that says go get me those prereqs, and it'll bring it down uh, to the system so that you can run this later. Um, oh, I'm down here. All right, so. All right, so we're doing test number one and we're showing details. So showing details actually shows what the commands are. So these are the actual things like you would have had to research, you had to like stay up late at night or you had to have a best friend that's doing red teaming and be like, well, what do you do on the command line to get this to happen? So these are the actual things to do to get things to happen. Like here's the net user guest. Yep, activate it, give it a password, put into the administrators uh, group put into the remote desktop users group. That's always great. Uh, you know, um, turn on terminal services for multiple connections, I think. Uh, and then I want to point out cleanup commands. So like, yeah, it's great to like do these automations, but once you do that, you probably should clean up after yourself. You don't want to keep these vulnerabilities on your system. So they have a cleanup command. It's super awesome. Um, yeah, so here we go. We're going to clear that. Yep, yep. Well, because it's so big. Okay, so I'm just checking here the net local groups, just showing you again, nothing up my sleeves, the administrator account domains, that's all that's in there. But when we run the automation tool, guess will go there because that's just part of the automation. Uh, and so I'm also probably going to check all the logs. I always like to refresh. To make sure that you know <clears throat> it gets the latest logs because Windows is finicky. I'm sure you know that. Uh, admins out there, so a lot of nothing in these logs. And again, I also like to show this going. There's not much from default Windows logs. Not much in the security. Not much in the Windows. Uh, but if you install Sysmon, oh my gosh! And like if you combine that with like command line auditing and script lock logging. Holy smokes, do you get fidelity of alerts? Like here we go in Sysmon, you see that on the command line, that's actually what I typed on the command line. You're not going to get that in PowerShell. That's me going through going, well, what's up with PowerShell not saying anything, right? Uh, and then I go into security. What's up with security not saying? Well, I mean, it says some things. There's some things in there. It says, ah, yeah, someone enumerated the administrator's account. Someone logged on, you know, but they're not saying that someone did this on the command line. Like that's like, basically back in the day, I used to do digital forensics and instant response. I used to have to have fancy forensic tools to do and uncover the things that Sysmon does. It's incredible what this tool does. Uh, it's, it should be putting forensic people and in instant response out of business. Actually, it's just, they're just uh, fanatics for Sysmon. It's just, it makes their job so easy. Um, so yeah, so here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and just run this test on this system. All right, there's the test, except we will, whoops, hang on. Ah, ah. sorry, this thing's funky. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna run the test, just test number one. Okay, and I just put that output there so that I could see it. So anyways, successful, successful, successful. It did its thing. Uh, let's go ahead and look. Let's go in here. 
Refresh, we're gonna look. Okay, it says, okay, added security enabled local group. Okay, it looks like something was added to the administrator account. That's kind of all we can, oh wait, looks like guest. Okay, oh, remote desktops. Okay, okay, there's something, but it's not telling you the, like the command line, right? You're like, what's happening here? There's weird things happening here. I don't like the way this looks. Uh, what's cool though, it is, um, it is, it is telling you what it, what's being changed. Um, that's great. But not, I don't know, not a lot. <laughs> so let's go down. Let's go and find this one. Um, usually I can just like click on the folder and press S and we'll just go down to the S's and I get the this one. Um, oh, did I? Oh no, it's rechecking something. There we, oh yeah, okay, yeah, let's, sure, let's check out PowerShell. Did it find anything? Oh look, still three things. Wow, thanks PowerShell, even though I use PowerShell to get to the system. Uh, okay, so here we go. Um, oh yeah, there's a bunch of scheduled tasks. You know, as admins, there's scheduled tasks all over the place. Um, you can configure Syspawn to just say, don't even look at those ones if you want. So let me kind of breeze through these scheduled tasks to find you know the real deal here. Um, <clears throat> so schedule tasks, schedule tasks, um, TCP, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it's cool, it does service creations, it does registry modifications, it does DNS, it does, Deletion of files, like all sorts of stuff. Okay, so here, client two is my attacker box. I'm win RMing. It's like, holy crap, and I'm getting to client one. Oh, crap. It gives you the IP address. Like, yeah, it's giving you like a lot of good stuff in here. Um, so I'm just I'm just pointing out like how much more verbose and on what like ports. It's like super cool. Uh, and then here is the actual command uh, saying, hey, look, a command prompt's being used. What's up with that? And then we go to registry. Oh, look. Hey, this was added. That was our uh, automation. It added this uh, terminal server extra stuff. Uh, there's the other terminal server thing. See, modify registry. Uh, another fantastic thing to have. Oh, look at this. It even gives you the parent command line. Look at all that stuff. Net user guest active, net local group, remote desk. I mean, you're like, oh crap, something is going down right here. So, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna stop there because that's that's all we need to know. Uh, this thing's amazing and it does so much for you. <clears throat> so what we get out of that is prevention isn't everything. Uh, because I'm, I'm telling you this because EDRs, you name them, um, antivirus, antivirus just looking for signatures. None of those things for the most part, some will do certain things. They're not gonna stop administrator commands. Like those commands that I was doing were administrator commands. Net user, that's an administrator command. You know, no one's gonna stop that. Uh, they're gonna, they might like link it with behavioral stuff, uh, but they're not gonna stop it. Uh, so yeah, so please, please um, don't rely on prevention. Um, and if and if you're if you're not doing something like Sysmon, you're you're obviously not detecting, which is I guess okay if you're like, oh, well, you know, we don't, we've never had a breach or we've never had, you know, a problem. Well, probably because you don't see it. You're not looking at it. You can't, you're not uncovering it. You're not doing uh, what you should be doing. And that's actually enabling detection so that you can have response. Um, so you're not getting these things if you're not having the correct things like say Sysmon installed or like an EDR, like say um, you got Windows, um, Defender for Endpoint, which is super great, and it has a lot of Sysmon stuff. Sysmon's configurable, but like if you move to the Endpoint stuff from Microsoft, then it's not configurable. Yeah, goods and bads on that. Um, if you have an A5, please use it. Um, please detect. It does a bunch of detecting. It does the auto responses. Please do that. Um, I want to point out um, other places. There's this Conti ransomware. They actually got their plan revealed. So if I go, oh, let's see here, uh, plan revealed. Uh, let's end show, let's go. So if you go to this website, this is their plan. Like their plan using Cobalt Strike. They're like, hey, I'm gonna use, who am I? Oh, that's another admin command. I'm gonna use net local group, another admin command. I'm gonna use all these, all these admin commands. It's just ridiculous. Um, proc dump, um, you know, just a bunch of 
bunch of commands here. What else do they have? Uh, mm, uh, anyways, so yeah, so this is like their whole manual. Like, hey, once you get into a system, do these things, uh, do these bad things. So let me from current slide. All right, so yeah, that's what this slide's about. I think there's links to get to this, um, to these uh, these things. Um, so hopefully you have an, uh, you know, a policy in place, you have controls in place, but I say this because um, even though you have a policy in place, you may not, you might be like, oh yeah, I have logging because they're default. It's like, oh, you really don't because you're not logging the right things, the correct data, right? Are you doing like, automation um, red team type stuff to create those artifacts to be able to know that you're logging the right things. Uh, so again, intrusion detection. Are you saying, oh yeah, Sophos does it? You're like, yeah, but Sophos doesn't like detect the net user this or this or that, right? Um, maybe plain vanilla Sophos doesn't. Um, and then, uh, you know, are you monitoring on your critical systems? Well, if you think monitoring is detecting with default logs, then eh, probably not. But people can say like, ah, yeah, they are, right? You can fudge it. Um, please have these kind of backed up to actual like guidelines and, and uh, usable things. I'm kind of going to speed through this a little bit more so that we have some time here uh, for some Q&A. So, uh, you know, where do we start? Where do we start to even detect this? I like to bring up this game uh, it's called Backdoors and Breaches, and you can go to the link here and go to it, but basically it follows that whole like steps. So like here's the initial compromise, here's the pivot, traverse, lateral movement, here's the persist, here's the C2 exfil, all those kind of things. Uh, I like to say let's, you know, you don't even have to play the game. Just look at the card. Just go, all right, I want to do initial compromise. It's going to be this card says it's password spray. Okay, well, can you detect that with a sin? Can you detect that with... You know, firewall logs, what can you detect that with, right? And here's some extra tools that could be used for password spray. It could be Hydra, like I mentioned earlier. It could be this domain password spray. It could be all sorts of things. And again, this can translate into like the pivot part. Okay, what are they using for, you know, pivoting? Are they using Metasploit, this tool here? Are they using these other scripts? Do you know about them? How do you detect them? Uh, these are some things you could use to detect them, right? It just allows you to like carry on that conversation. Uh, which would hopefully lead into, well, do you have a procedure for that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I have a procedure. Here it is right here. It's, you know, I do internal segmentation and I make sure that I do this and that with IP tables and Windows Defender and, you know, okay, that's great. Do you have a procedure for this other card that we talked about, right? And and so this game actually gives you a bunch of procedures like, okay, yeah, I have that, I have that. And, and, and really, you get to talk about it. You just get to start the conversation. So this is good for like managers, admins, directors, you name it. Uh, just looking at this and just starting the conversation uh, will be huge. And, and just seeing if you have procedures, seeing if you can detect these bad things. Um, and they even have what they call an inject card. So you could even just make it up for whatever, you know, the monthly thing is, right? Like, okay, what if, um, uh, what's the new Apache thing is, is, is an issue. Do we have, you know, detection for that? Or, you know, what, what are our procedures there? And yeah, all those kinds of things. So uh, it's pretty cool uh, game, highly recommend it. So, so that I'm leaving time for questions and answer, uh, I'm gonna leave you with my tired dog. I'm sure you're all very tired at this point. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to go through, but really this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to say. And really, the, if, if you get nothing else than this, uh, and if you don't have the resources, uh, please at least like consider having some kind of annual pen test, pen test app, pen test systems, pen test, uh, you know, IP ranges, just actually have pen testers come in, do the thing and provide, hey, these are the things that happen. These are the easy ways into your network from the internet perhaps, right? Or these are the many ways once you're inside your network, they can do devastation, just unleash a ransomware and, and go everywhere. So that's that's kind of where I'll end it at. So yeah, um, I'm not really looking at, or I can't see questions. If Let me see if I can bring up things. Oh, so Mark asked, is there a big performance hit uh, to running Sysmon all the time? 
Ah, great question. Uh, yeah, so um, it always depends, I say. It depends, depends. So um, it is kind of a kernel driver, so please don't put it on Active Directory. Please don't put it on, like, high-performing so like file share server. Uh, uh, what I've seen, what I've experienced is if you have a fresh, and hopefully you're doing this, uh, a fresh image, maybe you have some kind of DevOps going on and you can just like, when you like have updates to systems and services, you can just be like, I'm gonna spin up a, a parallel system. And when it's all good, this other one goes away. And so you, you have like a fresh image, right? That's like pie in the sky ideal. Um, however, uh, if you don't, what I found out is like I have done uh, Windows Server, I forget if it was 2012, 2016, I think it was, when I had like two years of patches, like cumulative patches or just patches in general. When I put Sysmon on, the CPU would spike. And I'm like, what is going on? Why is things so slow? Uh, and I look up, you know, performance monitor and I'm like, oh crap, Sysmon. And so I just stopped the service. Stop the service, everything comes back to, to normal. I'm like, what? And then I was like, okay, well, let me go ahead and take these same versions, you know, Windows 20, 12, I, had, I think I had a Windows uh, 10 at the time, uh, maybe even a seven, I can't remember. Anyways, I had a, a various uh, ones and I, and I duplicated it, but with a fresh image and I put Sysmon on, nothing. Everything's all good. After all the updates and patches that I applied at that point in time, uh, everything was good. So yeah, I would say if you have legacy systems that have accumulated <laughs> patches there might be a problem with performance hit on there um and so how i would uh how i would do those kinds of things is like a a stage deployment so i'd be like okay only five computers here once i deploy it well number one how old are these things and do they have a whole bunch of patches maybe i don't do those maybe i just do ones that are freshly imaged right and then of those once i install sysmon do i come back and i say okay what is the cpu on that if it's pegged then you know oh Okay, then I have to do the stop command uh, to stop Sysmon on those to, to bring it back to normal. So it's a really easy um, fix. So that, that's the only performance hit I've seen. I haven't really seen a performance hit when it functions regularly. Besides the other dog picks, uh, Ruben asked, can you please advance the slide to show the CISO training resources? Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't mean to. Um, that is not meant to be there, um, but right. it's. It's obviously, um, no, but I will. Um, <laughs> I will. It's, I mean, it's public. This is all yeah. on the public internet. So, hey, why not? Thank you for saying that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Jeffrey, or Swift on security has a Sysmon baseline config. That's lots of uh, folks reference, and he's got a GitHub link for it there. Yep. There's also an EDR testing tool in GitHub as well that I use all the time that uses a lot of these techniques. Okay, EDR tool, huh? Okay, um, now I can see uh, messages. So, yep, sysmon config uh, for sure. Let's see here. Yep, and then there's Olaf. I don't know if you've seen uh, kind of the, on the same vein. So you got you got Oman, uh, Olaf here has a Sysmon modular. Basically, it's awesome. What he does is he takes the uh, MITRE attack nomenclature, those numbers and stuff, and he actually pins them to the event IDs for Sysmon. And so you're like, oh, number 10 has to do with process editor. Number 11 has to do with file created. Like, it's super cool. And if you want, um, I actually have a script I made for uh, one of my competitions for Cyberforce competition uh, for the blue team so they can detect us. So I basically have it. Uh, download Sysmon from uh, SysInternals Live, uh, put it in the temp uh, directory, then I make this thing run, and then I run Sysmon with it combined, all from the temp directory uh, and install. So if you want that, please send me an email, and I'd love to uh, send you where that is. Um, yeah, uh, what else is here? Baseline configs, lots of folks reference. Yeah, yeah, Swift on security, yep. But, and then, or you can use, this one as a baseline as well. Fun, engaging session. Yeah, I try to do a little bit of off-roading as possible, uh, make it interesting. Um, great. I wonder here, I got Teams, Security Advocates, Enable Logging. So like, for instance, oh yeah, here's that command line auditing. All you have to do is like enable this and enable that, right? 
Um, and then you got some uh, command line auditing. And here's my um, here's my code for Sysmon. Questions, please. I was going to say, if anybody has any questions, please do come off mute as well. I don't yeah. know if uh, Claudio has a question. No. Nope, they muted themselves. There you go. Here's the code. If you want that. And then, yeah, I have GPO stuff too, because I've I've deployed this in a Active Directory type of environment. <clears throat> but yeah, is there any other any other questions? I think we, we still have lots of time here. Yeah, we got about eight minutes. Uh, there is a link in the chat for um, a survey. Please do take a moment to fill that survey out so we can uh, get a, an idea how we're doing. Also, there's a spot in there for you to put an email address if you want to. This way we can always reach out to Jesse afterwards and say um, these people would like some follow up and ping you guys on the side. Yeah, while we're waiting, um, also here I just want to point out there's MITRE ATT&CK. Uh, and kind of the different ones they have for their matrices. They not only do they have Windows, they have Mac, they have Linux, they have stuff in the cloud, network, containers, ICS, mobile, all the things. Um, and so like, oh yeah, there's this other one too while we're waiting. GitHub, uh, Atomic, Red Team. So if we go here, they actually have an area. Where is it? Where it? Oh, they've changed it. They used to have an area where they would show you how Atomic Red Team is mapped to MITRE, but it looks like they. You're looking just at the read. I think it's like one level up from there, because there was something that said roll the dice when you were looking at the Atomic Red Team, and it would huh? show you the the T number that you were talking about. Yeah, they just changed it. No, they. Um, I used to get this um, all the time. Ah, yeah, they're changing things all the time. Um, so if we do like say, what I'm looking for is navigator. So this this thing. But I'm not looking for it for these. Huh, interesting. Yeah, they changed it on me. They used to make it easier, this navigation layer. It used to be able to go and go like find Windows and hit raw. I think go up here, grab this, then actually go to MITRE. Um, and Gator like this. Oh, looks like that has changed a bit too. And then you say open from a URL. I can load the URL, press this little arrow button, and then it would do this. And then so everything from Atomic Red Team for whatever I grab, oh, Windows, um, it shows. It's like we cover all these things. You can test for all these things in red. Oh, yeah. That. That is that. Cool. Uh, any other questions in here? No, nope, nope. OK. Well, I hope this was beneficial. I hope everyone uh, had a great time. Uh, again, I hope please uh, visit that YouTube video um, of the um, sys admins that got ransomware over at a K-12. Um, <clears throat> very very informative what they went through and uh, lessons they learned. Um, again, they had like 28, 29 lessons. You know, move services to SaaS, um, what have you. All right, um, I'm going to turn off the recording at this time.